Hey guys, so what is one of the most effective ways to scale your SEO traffic, increase your rankings, and make more money with your blog or niche site? That's going after low competition keywords. So you guys already know what low competition keywords are. They are keywords in our niche that don't have a lot of SEO competition. And when we can find these keywords, write a great article about them, it makes it easier to rank and get traffic from those keywords. So that's why they're important. In fact, finding low competition keywords was one of the main ways I was able to take one of my niche sites to over 500,000 page views per month. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my three-step process for finding low competition keywords and deciding whether or not it's actually worth writing an article about those keywords. So step one is use a keyword research tool. So there's a lot of great keyword research tools out there like Ahrefs and SEMrush that cost about $150 per month. So in this video, I'm going to show you a keyword research tool that I had created and developed for people that are in my SEO membership. So everyone in my membership gets free access to this keyword research tool. We are reopening the doors to that membership on March 21st. I will leave a link to a sign up page to a wait list if you're interested. So this membership is only open two times per year. It's where all the best bloggers and SEO people come together in one group. We have trainings, we have live Q and A's, we have free tools like this. We do audits. I take you behind the scenes of one of my niche sites. So if you want to learn more about that, again, I'll leave a link to the sign up page below this video. So again, step one is all about going into a keyword research tool and kind of entering a seed keyword, whether generally about our niche or maybe about a specific post that we want to write about. So this is the free tool that are, is available to my members. Now let's pretend I was in the succulent niche, right? So broadly speaking, I could just type in succulent into a keyword tool and hit enter. And what it's going to do is spit back a bunch of keywords. Now you'll see here, this tool that I've created for my students is only for low competition keywords, right? That's the name of the game here with keyword research. We really only care about low competition keywords. We don't need millions and millions of irrelevant keywords that we're never going to rank for, right? So when I type in succulent, this tool is spitting back a bunch of potential keywords that we could write about. Aphids on succulents, baby toe succulents. This must be a type of um, succulent here. So these are all potential ideas here. Bear claw succulent, right? There's a couple of variations here with pretty good volume in low competition as well. And there's, again, what we can do is kind of scan this list and see if we should write an article about it, right? Can I use all purpose plant food for succulents and so on and so forth? And in this example, you know, there's plenty of ideas that we could go with here. Succulent pots with drainage is a good one. So again, there's a bunch of examples from your tool that's going to spit out, but I kind of like this one here. So succulent pots with drainage. Let's pretend that we're going to write a post about that or think that we're going to write a post about that. But again, step number one is using a keyword research tool to get a list of ideas back to you. And again, this tool gave us about 60 potential ideas to write about, but I want to run with the pot with drainage one. So let's, let's roll with that example. All right. So once we've identified a keyword using a tool, Step two is what we want to identify the user intent. All right, so the user intent basically just means what is the user or the searcher expecting to find on the other end of our search? And the way that we do this is we simply Google our keyword that we're thinking about writing a post about. So for example, succulent pots with drainage. And what I'm gonna do is look at the results and get an idea based on what Google is showing me, what is the user expecting to find, right? So number one is an Amazon page, right? A, a link to an Amazon shop page. Number two is a link 
to an Etsy page, okay? So the first two links, and we can see these Google shopping pages, but there's blog post idea and shopping page, right? So based on this, we could keep the keyword itself, but if we look at number three ranking here, best drainage pot for succulents and number four, best succulent pots planters, what if we uh, kind of amended the keyword here and just went with best succulent pots with drainage, right? And so we kind of tweak the keyword based on the intent because the first keyword was giving us shopping results and this one will as well, but now we see number one result is a blog post, right? Best drainage pots for succulents, which is good news because we're gonna write an article, right? An actual blog post. So Amazon is two, but number three is a blog post. Number four is a blog post, right? So checking the intent and then maybe tweaking the keyword based off the intent is step number two. Okay, so after we've identified the user intent, step number three is analyzing the SEO competition. So what that means is we have to determine who else is ranking on Google, what types of sites are ranking, what is their authority compared to our authority. And what I like to do is basically look for the domain rating for each site that is ranking. Most of you probably know that domain rating is a metric from Ahrefs. It's very similar to domain authority, which is from Moz, but it basically gives us a quick and dirty assessment of the overall authority of the sites ranking in Google. So we can see number one, and I'm using the Ahrefs um, Chrome extension or the Chrome plugin, which shows me the DR in the search results. So succulentalley.com, Ahrefs, again, using the free Chrome extension, is telling me that they have a domain rating of 55, which is pretty good, right? That's pretty high and it's probably a higher DR than probably most people watching this video, but it's not crazy. It's not in the 70s or 80s. So that's kind of, you know, a mixed flag there. Number two was Amazon. We're gonna skip because we're not competing with Amazon, but look at number three, okay? So this website is ranking number three for this keyword in Google, the yard and garden Dot com and Ahrefs is showing me they have a DR of only 19, which is really low, especially for a site that's ranking in the top three for a keyword like this. So this is a really good sign. Again, it depends on what your domain rating is as well, but if you have a lowish domain rating, it's a pretty good sign that the number three ranking site is a DR 19. Now it's great news that we found one low competition website ranking on number one. I might also quickly scan the rest of the results to see who else is ranking. And if there's another low competition site that we can find would be another good sign. And we can see here number nine, right? SublimeSucculents.com. They have a DR of 31, which is obviously higher than 19, but still a DR of 31 is not very high. It's frankly, a site or an authority that most of us could compete with pretty easily. So the fact that we found two low authority sites ranking on page one for this keyword is a really good sign. And based on that analysis, this is probably a keyword. If I had a gardening site or a succulent site, this is probably a keyword that I would feel comfortable going after. And really, when it comes to finding low competition keywords, it can be as simple is that using a keyword tool to enter some seed keywords, checking the user intent in Google of that keyword, and then finally analyzing the competition, the search competition for people that you're competing against. All right, so do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, the like button, subscribe to my channel, and let me know in the comments below what's your favorite way of finding low competition keywords.